location and being a good starter in the past yeah. and being available in the week maybe a game two, for example? Yeah, it was um, – our bullpen became a, some, you know, a bunch of short relievers, short inning relievers, and so, you know, we kind of went in expecting, um, in the, you know, the workout phase postseason that that uh, we're going to have John available to start one of the games, and just you know, one of those things that happened. It's unfortunate, but it happened, and uh, it didn't allow us to have a uh, one of our starters go in the bullpen. Yeah. You know, we haven't even discussed, honestly, Deal's role next year. I'm just so excited about how he threw the ball in September and, and how the national, how he threw the ball on the national stage. Um, whatever we decide to do with him, I'm, he's going to gonna, he's gonna be a huge part of our team next year. But that was an unbelievable performance of the two games he pitched in the postseason. Um, and he wasn't really stretched out to those two type of innings either, just to kind of the way it fell. And, and he was just fantastic. So... Down the stretch into the postseason, um, uh, and he showed everybody what he, the kind of pitcher that we've been waiting for, and um, he's gonna he's gonna be a big impact for us going forward. Brandon, as you look back on the season, what moments or feelings kind of will stick with you? Well, I have so many great feelings. I mean, this the way it's the way it ended was awful and sucked, and uh, you know we're wearing that still. Um, but um, it was a really successful season. And, you know, overcoming so many odds and obstacles that are against us and so many people thinking that we weren't going to be a playoff team and all of a sudden we went 101 games and win the American League East. I mean, that's that's uh, says a lot about a lot of people in the organization, a lot of guys in that in that clubhouse. Um, so I'm really proud of that. But there's a you know, there was, we had great. I mean, we had so many awesome moments and um huge wins and close wins and the amount of close games we played was ridiculous and how we won some games um you know during the season it was just a total team effort and that's how we played all year and um you know unfortunately the postseason we just didn't play our best and um ran into a little bit of a buzzsaw but but uh i have i'm gonna have great memories of of this team No, I mean I'll, I'll watch. Um, I'm gonna watch a little differently this year. I'm gonna watch a little, a little irritated, um, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm still irritated. I'm still frustrated. Still pissed. Um, so when I watched those, you know, I watched the Diamondbacks last night. I'm really happy for Tori Lavallo and and uh, one of my best friends, Jason McLeod, over there in Arizona, and and. And uh, Mike and Amiel and this, what they're doing over there. That's, that was, that's a fun team to watch. So I was happy to watch those guys last night. Brandon, when you talk to your guys with you a day or two of perspective now, what's your sense of how they see the future? I'm saying that again with 10. Say that again. Uh, when, when you talk to your guys now after it's been a day or two now, I mean, when you talk to the players, what's your sense of how they see the future? Well, yeah, but there's not many players. I don't know how many guys are still here. Uh, and most of the guys are getting on in the car or going in an airplane probably right now. But um, spent the morning with him yesterday, you know, the team flight back. I think guys are dis very disappointed, but um, I think they're very aware of what they accomplished this year, and they should. This is, it's really, really hard what we did. And it's really, really hard what we did after losing 110 games two years ago. That's unprecedented. And so they need to know that and they need to understand that. And we came up short of what we expected out of ourselves. Um, but there's a lot to be um, proud of. And there's a lot to you – know, the guys are going to be back. There's going to be a uh, lot to look forward to because they're really good players. Like, uh, Brandon, Mike said that, uh, that like, if there's any deficiencies on the roster, any deficiencies that occurred in uh, the postseason, that that's one hand. But when you look at, at you and, and the postseason, do you look at things that you wish you would have done, or is it just kind of the way the script went? Whenever we lose any sort of game, whether it's in April or the postseason, I 
take it as harder than anybody else. And so when things don't work out the way that you want them to work out, I mean, I, I wear it big time. So whether it's division series or a game against Texas in April, um, you know, I take losses hard. Well, it was three unusual games. I mean, the, the the first game was a game that we won a lot of the, how that game was played. We won that game a lot, and it just didn't happen. We had scoring opportunities and just didn't couldn't cash in. They made a you know Young made a great play at third base in a big spot after Chappie had a tough time commanding. You know, in, in the inning, and uh, it just didn't go. We just, I feel like we didn't get any bounces or breaks, um, and then it's tough to play catch up in the postseason and from the second inning on. That's just bottom line. And um, so there's a lot of things to look back and you, you wish you know, things went differently. Yeah, I haven't even had those discussions with Mike. Me and Mike are going to talk about that you know, in the coming days. But um, I thought our guys did a great job and a huge part of why we won 101 games. I don't. That's that's nice. I'm still pissed, to be honest with you. So <laughs> I don't. You know, um, I'm disappointed, and and I mean, I don't really read a ton, and I try to keep my focus. I mean, when the season's going on, honestly, like all I'm worried about is, to, is that night's game. And so, what's what's happening around me? Sometimes I don't. I'm not aware of, or I'm pe I'm being told, but. Um, I'm just trying to get better every day, honestly, and I'm just trying to put our team in position to win as much as I possibly can. So, you know, whatever the people say, they say, and if it's nice things, that's that's great. Brandon, for a long time around here, we've been wondering where we have a number one starter, and we're looking for two or three agency or a big trade. Right. Even with Bradish's growth this season, the club has. I think it's got an opportunity to be a number one. I think a lot, I mean, when you talk about number one starters, it's a handful in this league. True number ones. And it's hard to be a true number one. So, does he have the ability to? Absolutely. Does Grayson have the ability to? Absolutely. There are ways away. You know what I mean? There are ways away. A true number one is a guy that is going to stop any sort of losing streak, a guy that's going to you know, go dominate a team in postseason, like those type of guys. And that's, that, those are hard to find. But those, those two guys have the stuff and the ability to be that type of guy. Does the team need a guy like that to get past where you guys Well, I'm hoping those guys develop into that, possibly. I don't know what we're going to do this offseason. That's not my department. I'm going to do the best I can with the roster that's, that's, that's given to me. I'm, I know Mike will, will be in discussions, and Mike will talk to me about roster stuff through this offseason and into the winter meetings and all that stuff. I can't believe that's we're already talking about that. But um, we'll see. I, I honestly don't know what moves we're going to make or what additions we're going to do. Or you know, we haven't even discussed next year at this time. I guess to follow that, Mike said that he will give a lot more weight to individual performances over 162 games than what someone did in a three-game playoff series in terms of his outlook on a player going forward. Are you kind of in that same boat? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, in the world of analytics, there's, there's a there's big samples and there's small samples. They 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 tend to look at the big sample. So, three games is kind of a small sample. It's also a first experience for a lot of those guys, and um, I, you know we're going to evaluate everything going forward. We just we just got our teeth kicked in, so we're still still wearing it. Wow, that that, that caused a reaction. <laughs> Well, I don't think it helps. Let's put it that way. I don't know if what they're going to do. I know that there's a lot of things that are way more 
people make a, more, a lot more money than I do um, that, are, that figure that out, and there's a lot more money involved <laughs> than my opinion. So I don't know what they're going to do about that. Uh, I think it's a long time. Yeah. Well, you're just trying to. You're at that point. You're just trying to. Trying to stay in the game somehow, you know. Um, try to give your team an opportunity to catch up. Without a long guy, especially in that second game, I knew everybody was going to pitch, and so it was like trying to find the right spot for every single person, knowing that if we could stay in this game. I'm going to need certain, these certain guys later in the game and not, you know what I mean? So that, that, was, that was challenging, and that blew up on us, um, kind of that middle or the early third of that game. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, when, you're, when your server gets knocked out in the second inning, the odds of winning are pretty low. Not that I'm thinking that at that time, but it's, not, it's, it's extremely challenging, and then it happens twice. It's... Not easy. That irritation you're feeling, is that something you, you know, learn to carry forward in some fashion, or is it something you eventually Probably not my strength. Um, oh, I don't like to lose. <laughs> I don't like to lose, and I don't like to lose like that. And and I wanted, you know, I wanted our players to jump around again, and I didn't want to, you know, it's a it's a really cool group. You didn't want to, you didn't want to. Uh, get on the plane after something like that, you know, after losing like three and, and you wanted to see them play, you know, continue to play. That's the bottom line. You just didn't want the season to be over. Brandon, uh, Cedric, Cedric Mullins with two stints on the IL had a really bad, so it was a really bad September, very good in the postseason. How much of it was that? Was he as healthy as he needed? Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not really sure. I, 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 I think the health, I'm sure, played a part into the lack of consistency. And his, and but he, you know, said it was a big part of our team, and he wanted to be out there, and he wasn't giving indication that he was hurt of any sort. And um, I'm sure, like everybody, he was banged up, and I, need, I know he needed those days off. But um, I just, you know, he didn't end the season very well, you know, very strong, and. Um, Still played great defense and looked healthy playing defensively, and but uh, just didn't get couldn't get going offensively there. Brandon, you mentioned um, of course it's Mike's job to put together the, the roster and all season, but what's your role in the talent, talent evaluation? What can you speak to a little bit the kind of conversations you guys have together? Well, I think we take a little bit of a break, and then as um, as the postseason wraps up, and we start talking about the roster next year and free agents that are available and and he'll he'll clue me in on um some some of the targets and why and those type of things that's um i'm not heavily involved in the transaction process or i think as we like last year once we start targeting free agents that we're interested in then i become a part of um the process of re like the recruitment process a little bit where i talk to like there was a lot of, a lot of guys we talked to last off season, and I was a part of, you know, talking about our organization and talking about our team to to those players. Um, so I'll, I'll be involved in that way. Brandon, um, you know, I asked a similar question, to Mike. You know, being a part of that recruitment, do you think having the 100 win season behind you is going to maybe speak to the potential free agents a little more as the proof of concept that? You guys have got together and might be an attractive factor. Yeah, I mean, I think about, I look back at those, all those players we talked to, the ones that didn't come here. We were, we were pretty right on. We were honest. We thought we were going to be pretty good. We thought they could be a, be a help. We thought that our team was going to be exciting and have a chance to win the AL East, and, and we were right. And, and I, they all, they all, everybody that from last year was very um, interested because of the, the talent we had on our team and the, the, the what we were going to look like going forward, and and we said what we were going to do, um, maybe a little bit more than we thought we were going to do, honestly, to start the year. So I think that that's going to be the same way this year, where people are going to see uh, that they enjoy playing here, and this is a fun team to be on, and 
and we're going to win. Brandon, when you made the decision to play Gunner mostly in short, a lot of managers would have buried a player like Mateo. You seem to still make, make sure he was part of the process. Mm -hmm. I do. I mean, there's there's only so many guys in the league that can run like him. There's only so many guys in the league that have that sort of talent. Um, he's still kind of early in his career. I primarily played him against lefties the second half of the year, last two months of the year, kind of, um, just because I thought it was it – was, um, I wanted to give him a little bit better opportunity, honestly. And he performed. He 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 swung the bat well against left-handed pitching, and, and was a, was made a difference for us when he was in the lineup against them. As a follow-up, did you see his def defense take a step back when he was playing part-time? I think a little bit. I think also um, because he was out there more inconsistently. Yeah. I think that that might have played a part in that a little bit. But I think that he still could be a really special defender. Um, I think that going from playing mostly every day to then being part-time or there was some, you know, there was a run in early September-ish that we, I think we faced like 15 righties in a row. So he got really sporadic playing time there. And that's hard to do. It's hard to do to keep, stay sharp defensively and also keep your mind right and ready. And that's something he's going to learn. I mean, he's still three years into his career and so it wasn't like we're rolling veteran dudes out there that you know like Adam Frazier if he didn't play for five days knew how to because he's been in the league for nine years um and that's just part of the that's just part of growing up as a major league player yeah Well, I think, well, let's go, I mean, for me, the six-man, when we decided to do, go to a six-man rotation, that possibly was a, a season saver um, because I feel like all those guys, that was kind of crunch time a little bit, and um, it allowed all those guys to get an extra day, and you, you sh they showed what they could be like when they're rested and I think that was the right thing to do for every one of them because they were flying over their innings because they were all pitching so well and we needed them so they um for me that was that was a huge part of our season is when we made that decision at that point you know that the I'm excited about our rotation going forward like I said I'm not sure what's going to happen from a roster standpoint but I know that we have we have um some guys in there that had great experience this year and had really good seasons and are still really er young in their career. I mean, if you just go back what Tyler Wells did the first half and then we did the last week of the season, it's unbelievable. Um, arguably our best starting pitcher the first half and then becomes, I don't think he gave up a run since he came back out of the bullpen and showed the kind of the stuff that he had out of the bullpen from a couple of years ago. So I, I uh, our starting pitching is is um, up and coming, and I think that they're only going to get better. Yeah. How was he going into the game? Was there any thought to make a change there before? Yeah, the of course, yeah, I mean a lot of things, um, but he seemed he seemed good, and. Um, we would have probably needed him for game four if we <laughs> he didn't pitch game three. So, But he felt prepared for that day. We gave him a heads up that it was going to be that day. Then obviously a lot of things happened um, over the weekend. And I thought he was handling it extremely well. If that affected it, you know, that second inning or not, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I give him a ton of credit for, for shouldering a lot and – going to do, going to try to do what he did. Brandon, at the end of 2022, you talked about the leadership of Lyles and Ruggie and Rob. Yep. And how they would, that would be difficult to replace. Yep. Um, and this year, you have Gibson and Frazier and Hicks. And it, you don't know what the situation is. McCann. McCann. Well, McCann will be back, though. Yeah. Um, Gail and Freed, I'm 100% sure they're going to be back or not. Um, 
How difficult is that, or is that just kind of part of it? And do you expect other guys to step up leadership wise? Yeah, I would expect that we're going to, you know, possibly acquire veteran players. Also, I mean, that, I think that's an important part of the of the clubhouse, and we've, uh, you know, Mike's done a great job of getting the right type of veteran guys in here. All those you name six or six or seven of those guys, they're all have been incredibly helpful. Um, Robbie still sends me texts. Robbie watch, watches every game, and and uh, you know he uh, th th those guys have been a huge impact on our younger players. And it's you can't really see it out there, and nobody sees it, but we know it in the, inside the clubhouse what they what they do for them, the young guys, and uh, yeah, I'm assuming that's been the, will be the same way going forward. Yeah, it was, I mean, it, it, we'll see what happens. They're they're at a certain point in their career that they've earned to um, go do the whatever's best situation so for their family and and so whatever's the best for them, I, I'm fully on board. How do you feel like that middle group of the roster, you know, half the group of players who's kind of been here throughout your tenure, has has done in that regard and how they've grown into those Yeah, they've it's it's they've been. Um, You've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of growth. I mean, a lot of growth in Santander and Hayes, um, and how they're they're just more vocal now and and um, established. And you know, Hazy starts the All Star game. You know, um, Santander's one of the best switch hitters in the league. So, just they've gotten older and they've had more experiences now, and they're not afraid to speak up. They've, they've, they've matured extremely well. They're fun to be around. Absolutely. I mean, they're uh, it's a great group. I think they're going to come into spring training extremely hungry. And I think the expectations are going to be even higher, which is what we want. And um, we're looking forward to embracing those. But I'm just looking forward, you know, I just say goodbye to a bunch of them. I want them to enjoy their offseason as much as they possibly can. And Looking forward to them, seeing them in spring, ready to go.